I never met the master. Um, I looked all my life for a teaching. I looked at Indian, Jain monks, uh, Gurdjieff, Est, uh, all kinds of things to, you know, pretty much off the track, really off the track. Um, and then I lived in, I went to France for five years with my husband and my little boy. My husband was the director of a school year abroad pro program for American, <clears throat> 60 American kids. And we were in our last year and um, I had a very, I made wonderful friends there, really wonderful. Um, and one wanted to introduce me to somebody who shopped, a Swiss woman who shopped at the same food co-op I did. This friend of mine was just very curious. She was very traditionally French. And this was very, you know, um, exotic, really, that you went to a, a co-op, sort of a health food co-op. So anyway, she wanted to introduce me to this woman. And I didn't want to meet anybody else. I, I just wanted to savor the life that I had, which was wonderful, because we were going to be leaving in a few months to come back to New Hampshire. But finally, this woman had been so helpful in finding families for our 60 students that I finally couldn't say no. I finally had to, to go. So it turned out that this Swiss woman, who she didn't really know, she just met in a Bible study, lived right next door to the school on the top of which we lived. And um, my friend wanted to see her kitchen and how she cooked. And again, just always curious, learning new things. So we went there, me dragging my feet. And she did not want to show us her kitchen because she was very Swiss and it wasn't impeccable after lunch. But she said, I will show you some books that I bought at that co-op where she shops. So she brought out some books of Claire Bon. And I, those were kind of famous books in the, this was in the 80s, late 80s. And she said, um, I especially loved these quotes at the, the bottom of these pages by this Omram Mikhail Ivanov. And she said, I went and bought some, some books. So she brought out two. And one was Christmas and Easter in the initiatic tradition. And the other was yoga of the yoga of nutrition. So I said, oh, can I borrow one? And um, she said, yeah, but bring it right back because I haven't read it. So I took it home and I just like swallowed it whole. I, I don't know, I read it in a few hours, I guess. And I, I mean, it was, it was done really at that point. I mean, uh, so I took it back to borrow the yoga of nutrition and she said, well, you know, there's a little, there's a group near here. And I said, oni va? Mm -hmm. And she went, whoa, if the, you know, the directrice of the Ecole Americaine thinks, you know, we should do that, well, why not? So long story short, her husband, uh, my husband never had a choice about what I did. <laughs> Hers did. And so she was not allowed to go till we met the responsable. And so he came and he was a mason. He came to her house. My husband wasn't interested, he didn't come. Um, and very simple, very nice man who talked and talked about money, you know, that money was just a, if you wanted to be a member. And, and anyway, um, it was okay with him that she go. So we went, yeah, he gave her permission. And so we went and it was, um, Absolutely, it was really clear from the book, the first book. But when I went to that little group, they built a little house in the countryside outside of Rennes in Brittany, um, and a long French garden. And there were just, I don't know, 50, 20 of them, I think. And um, it was as though it was the first time I ever heard music. They, when they played the classical music, I'm not sure what it was. I think it was Mrs. Solemnus. But I remember thinking, I don't think I've ever really heard music before. And um, anyway, it was this small group. I think within a month, I was dancing the Panurhythmi. Some mistakes, I'm sure, but for some reason. And um, uh, my husband was scared to death because like one morning he woke, and I, I woke up and I, was, I had put a chair up on one of those you know, deep French 
window sills and I was watching the sunrise. And he'd always thought I was a little, you know, a, a little, he was always worried that maybe one day when I went out, I may just may not, I just may go over the horizon. So, so this he thought could be the, the way, but ultimately he saw me absolutely settle down in myself. It's like uh, the way I think of it visually is that I'd been living like this for a long time. And all of a sudden, something just took me into my center. And um, that was 1991. We, came, we were leaving. It was the saddest thing that I was going to have to leave this group. They were so wonderful to this woman and me. They, they didn't hover over us, but they just made a place. They watched, watched over us, really. Um, and we went, I wanted to go both weekends and Wednesday, but they, they warned me particularly not to do that to my family, you know, not to scare my husband that they, that was my first commitment. I mean, it was so wise, so sane. So I did just go once a week. But anyway, it came time to leave and they said, well, are you anywhere near Canada? And I said, oh, it's kind of, I never, never crossed the border. So they said, oh, the master loved the Canadians. Go there. So I did. I went to Laval. And again, they were fantastic. It was, you know, just a whole other world opening up. And that was the beginning of the rest of my life. It was fantastic. Thank you. Oh, well, my, 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 I do have a main point, actually. And that's that, um, I mean, I went kicking and screaming to meet that woman. I did not want to do that. And I succeeded in avoiding it for quite a while. But when the time comes, I think, and I guess when you're ready to work, um, it's going to be, you're going to have to resist it very hard in order to, to not go with it. Um, I mean, I felt there was something absolutely magic in that. A series of events. So, yeah. Then, since as, as soon after I met Violet Neville, well, I asked who was translating these books because I'd bought them all in French, um, but then I wanted to lend them to my friends. So when I first, I remember exactly where I was in my house in New Hampshire. I read an English book. And I thought, oh my God, I can hear the master's voice through this English. Who's doing this? And it was Violet Neville, who's now gone. <clears throat> and uh, somewhere around the same time, somebody was telling her about me, that I did work in the editing field. So I ended up being her editor for, I don't know how many years, maybe five. I do. I do. I edit and translate and things like that, which has been, you know, the great work of my life, really. So, thank you so much.